this video we're going to talk about big room planning or should i say a large virtual planning these days let me first give you some background and context of why this is important i'll give you some tips on how to organize your teams and optimize big room planning but don't miss the end this is where i'll give you some useful lessons learned to enhance your planning within your team whether it's virtual or in person Dive into the world of project management and you'll eventually encounter the concept of big room planning. So what is this all about? Picture this, all program and team members huddled together for a couple of days every quarter. Their mission, to plan and prioritize their work for the upcoming period. This isn't just a meeting, it's a strategy, a commitment to collaboration. It's like a jigsaw puzzle where each piece represents a different task or objective. The goal is to fit these pieces together, aligning everyone's goals and objectives to create a coherent, unified picture. It's a way of ensuring that everyone is on the same page, working towards the same end goal. Now that we know what big room planning is, let's explore how to prepare for it. Preparation plays a crucial role in big room planning. It's not simply getting everyone in one room and discussing the plan. It's about creating an environment conducive to collaboration and strategic thinking. How do we do that? Here are a few steps. Firstly, setting up the room. The layout should foster interaction and participation, not just from a few, but from everyone. Think of a U-shaped table arrangement or a circle of chairs, whatever works best for your team. Secondly, ensuring all necessary stakeholders are present. This means not only the team members, but also the product owners, business stakeholders, and anyone else who has a say in the project. It's about getting everyone on the same page. Now let's take an example. Suppose we're planning a software development project. We'd need the developers, of course, but also the product managers to guide the vision, the designers to craft the user experience, and the quality assurance folks to ensure everything is up to par. Lastly, setting clear goals for the meeting. This isn't a casual get together. It's a focused strategic session aimed at aligning everyone's efforts towards a common objective. Are we looking to prioritize certain tasks? Or perhaps we're trying to identify potential roadblocks. Whatever the goal, it should be clear to everyone involved. With the right preparation, big room planning can be a game changer. I wanna thank everybody for making it this far in the video. Remember, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like this video, continues more content going forward. Now, let's get back into the topic. But what are the goals of this strategy? Big room planning is not a meeting for the sake of meeting. It has clear and defined goals. At the heart of it all, this strategy is designed to align everyone's objectives. By gathering all program and team members, we create a unified vision of what we're working towards. It's a two-day event that fosters collaboration, breaking down the barriers that can often exist in large organizations. But it's not just about alignment and collaboration. Another crucial goal of big room planning is team roadmap creation. By coming together, we're able to collectively prioritize our work, ensuring we're focusing our efforts where they're needed most. This can lead to a significant increase in productivity, something we all strive for. These goals, alignment, collaboration, and productivity, they're not just buzzwords. They're the building blocks of successful project outcomes. They ensure we're all rowing in the same direction, working as a cohesive unit, and making the best use of our time and resources. Achieving these goals through big room planning brings numerous benefits. Let's delve into these. Big room planning is more than a strategy. It's an investment that brings significant returns. Let's talk about these returns. One of the most tangible benefits is increased productivity by bringing everyone together to plan and prioritize. We eliminate the back and forth that can bog down a project. Even a modest increase in productivity makes big room planning a worthwhile investment. But productivity isn't the only benefit. There's also improved collaboration. When all the stakeholders are in the same room, we can hash out disagreements, align on goals, and build stronger relationships. These stronger relationships lead to more effective teamwork and more effective teamwork leads to better results. And let's not forget about alignment. With big room planning, everyone understands the goals and their role in achieving them. 
This alignment ensures that everyone is rowing in the same direction, which is crucial for the success of any project. So that was a deep dive into big room planning, a powerful tool that when utilized correctly can bring about remarkable improvements in project outcomes. So let's talk about big room planning. So first of all, we'll talk about what is big room planning, give a high level overview from a framework that I like, which is Scaled Agile Framework, gives a good overview of what this is and the components of it. And then we'll talk about the tools that you can use as a leader or a product owner or a scrum master or a leader to actually implement this type of planning. So let's first go to the overview of this. So what this is, is a, a big room filled with everybody and the, the product teams who are then are needed to build the product to come up with a plan and align on a plan for the next two, three months. And so this right here is really important because it's like kind of a bottoms up approach to planning, right? You get to the people, you, you come into this meeting with high level VP like visions and you give that to the team to at the end of this event, break this up into timelines and then commit back up. So you can think of it like that, bottoms up approach to planning. And so the high level version of it, it's really a way to get bring everybody together. Because as if the teams are developing their plans individually, uh, there could be some changes. And also there could be things that are not discussed or not uh, known on the other team's plans or assumptions made that cause the roadmap to shift more to the right or extend. And so this is a way to actually get to a face-to-face -face or a virtual meeting with all the parties, to develop a plan together. And so the, really the idea here is coming together to build one plan and also understanding that there's alignment from the business executives or business owners of what the next business goals are and the vision to understand that as well so they can develop their products or their plans the best to address that. There's also uh, a way to condense conversations in a shorter period of time because you have everybody you need to have these conversations. So it's really important to understand uh, the benefits of this and why people do it, right? It's talking about things now versus later when they might be too late to discuss. So the inputs of this is the business context. So going from starting from uh, high level, so VP, director, even higher business owners. That's where the input of this meeting comes from. And also maybe a high level roadmap and vision and maybe the highest priority from the customer features that are in, in the next uh, time box, whether it's one, two, three months. And that's where the team goes and actually breaks those down and says, this is our plan on some kind of visualization board. And this is what our, our objectives are to complete in this next time segment based on all the factors that we discussed together. So there's a lot of pre-work into this. And so the pre-work is important to condensing these conversations because this unit can last one, two, three days. And so the idea is if you do some pre-planning, some discussions in advance, you can condense some of these conversations uh, more do or the inner team discussions and planning versus developing what needs to be done. <clears throat> Other things here that are important is, you know, the tooling for this, since sometimes you don't have the opportunity to have it in one physical room. So the tooling, the virtual tooling to have these facilities events is kind of what I'm gonna to discuss today. Um, most of those communication channels. How uh, about really, if, uh, I think the safe agile framework, I don't think it's the best way from work from, you know, detail to detail, but I do think it's a great starting point for those that have no idea where to start. I think you should definitely start here and you tailor it to works for your business, which includes the items on these agendas and also the, the time boxes for this as well. And there's a typical agenda for this, right? That kind of gets the gets those objectives out as far as making those roadmaps aligning and identifying risk in advance. And you can think of it, this is kind of one of the outcomes here is visualization board. What's the thing you can see though really quickly here? And it's those red dependencies. And so that's what helps with leaders you can say, what things can we do to 
move the teams around, shift the teams up a little bit? What can we do now to prevent these red dependencies from actually being uh, causing issues on the roadmap, right? You can talk about that now versus when it's already too late and it's already occurring. Maybe in iteration 1.2, you're already here. Might be you're already too late. Um, my idea is you're bringing up um, aggregating what the team's gonna do at the end. There's also a confidence vote at the end of this. This is for accountability and also making sure that we're not missing someone's perspective. It's important that there might be one person that knows a lot about this specific product I bring up something that you can revise that plan now align um, versus it hurting the roadmap later on. So this is kind of the overall idea of PI planning. According to this, it's called PI planning. I'm calling big room planning because that removes the framework uh, from the actual event, which is a big room, whether virtual or in person, that you all align on a plan based on the business objectives or the vision of leadership. So that's an oil overview. So how do you actually do this? What tools do you have as a leader, a scrum master, program manager to actually do this? So there's one, uh, so the first way I would say to do this is you can use uh, with a uh, Jira feature that's already here, which is this timeline feature. And so here you can have high level groups of work that you can align on that vision. You can create those, those pieces of work and you can plan it into a roadmap. Right, so this is the first way. And also too, with this in mind, there might be ways you can actually attach it to dependencies. You can get that version, right? Remember that, that item that we we're talking about, see dependencies, uh, you can actually track that here. And it's the same kind of version at, at, actually as that one visualization board we showed. You see there's a red dependency here because it's in the same sprint, um, same time box. So that might be something we need to take a look at. But really the idea here is you can look between the teams work and plan it together. So the pro of this item, uh, the pro of this uh, tool using is that once you're done with the planning align, you can actually imp go and plan and execute it, right? You have all the work in Jira, which is gonna be there. Uh, if you're using Jira to manage the team's work, it's gonna be there anyway, so there's no movement in the work. There's also a pro that uh, you can have more details. Sometimes the visualization boards that are used will go into Miro. Sometimes it's hard to have all the details in there, so it's it's good to have some more information in there um, within the actual context you're gonna execute on it and actually work on it. It's also really easy to move things back and forth. So uh, if you know how to use this tool, it's really easy to move around. You can also add stories into the proper sprint. So it's really important that this is actually a very good tool the bad thing about this is that if, if uh, maybe stakeholders, VP, business owners, or maybe even within the teams are not familiar with Jira, this might not work very well, at least for the big room planning portion of it. So that might, that's the con and the negative is, is that it might be harder for people to actually plan for teams that are not familiar with this and then showcasing this work to leadership. I do think it's, a good feature and something you can finding a valuable you can use for that big room planning. Let's go to another option, which is the mirror way. I'm going to call it. Now that was a Jira way. This is the mirror way. And so if you go here, here's a board that I created that you can have the same view, right? But it's with sticky notes, a virtual sticky note uh, way to do this. And so you can see here that there is the team's sprints or iterations. Right, and you can see these sticky notes are probably user stories or pieces of work. There's some risks identified from the team, and then also the overall plan from the teams and dependencies. So you get all documented here. This is another tool you can use for this big room planning. There's also a free version of this, so that also helps with cost. So this is another version you can use to actually do this planning event. Uh, the pro of it, it's very easy, even business stakeholders understand it. There's a lot of ways you can modify it, kind of like a virtual whiteboard, a lot of flexibility. So I think there's a lot of pros on that side. The negative of this is that once you're done with this, you actually gotta import it into Jira. That takes some time. So keep that in mind that if you uh, are willing to take this route, just you know there's gonna be some work actually importing this into Jira, especially if you're using that tool to manage the work day to day. 
There's also some other tools I'm not gonna discuss, like there's Jira Align and as well as Jira Plans. That's those are some other tools you can use to actually uh, do this as well. But I'm going for the free versions, the one that are the cheapest. If you're thinking there's a value here of me showing uh, a video on one of those two, I can. But just for this purposes, uh, the idea here is using what we already have that's already included with what you're paying. Uh, Jira Plans is another one that you need a, a, a premium version of Elastian and then Jira Line is another whole cost structure altogether. We'll talk about that though in the road mapping video, a little more detailed on kind of what features you get and, and uh, if you're willing to take that route. So I appreciate everyone watching this video today. This is on big room planning and what some overview and some maybe some tools you can use within your teams to do that. If you're doing this virtually, you can use Zoom, you can use Chime. There's a bunch of ways to actually do this. You do need breakout rooms if you're doing it virtually though. So having separate rooms to separate teams so they can have their independent discussions. And then maybe a mutual room that people can jump back in for, disc, for uh, cross team discussions. So that's important as well. You can use pretty much any of those online virtual, uh, virtual uh, conference tools. They all work, but that's also needed in the logistics of that as well. Setting those things up, the input of that is going to be important as well. This is again very really valuable to get that bottoms up approach to planning for that one, two, three months um, from a top down vision to a bottoms up planning and alignment throughout the teams and identifying risks and events. So hope you find this uh, video valuable. You should implement big room planning within your teams tailored to your context. Like always, appreciate you watching this video. Subscribe, like it, and I'll see you in the next video.